you know what, what a great question. That is a great question. Now this is really interesting for us, even before the, the question of, of cultural patrimonial restoration became a museum issue everywhere, Holocaust restitution was a question for us. And you know, what better institution in the world than the Israel Museum to grapple with World War II restitution issues? And we just decided on day one that we were gonna set an example as often as the challenge presented itself, and we were able to do that. And you know, they, they, it, it was about case studies. It was about setting precedents for how to handle that matter. And we were able to do it in a very calm and collegial way with respect to how other institutions were responding to what we did. And we were able to do it by working with those who were making claims instead of fighting with them. So that's one issue, but the bigger issue is really about um, cultural restitution having to do with archeology. span Now, in, in the Israel Museum, 95% of the archeological material is documented to excavation in Israel. And only 5% is all the neighboring cultures, and that's the material that came to the museum through gift. So the Israel Museum has no challenges about works that it appropriated from other places or works, archeological works that it acquired because we have never bought them. So not that we're pristine, but again, we're a kind of example for that work. And, and our point during my tenure was to make sure that our colleagues knew that we were available in that way. Now from the 5% of the material archeologically that's in the museum that represents neighboring cultures, material that came as gifts. We did have, during my time, a few uh, restitution claims, and our view was that this material had been gifted to us. If the claim came, and if it were justified, there was every reason to return the material. And we did it twice, and again, it was about setting an example for others. 